this Daryl Morey and James Harden situation has been blown out of proportion, and now the NBA is joining in on it. According to Woj and Ramona Shelburne, the league office is believed to be pursuing an understanding of whether Harden was pretending a 2023-2024 holdout in violation of the league's collective bargaining agreement or had been referencing past contract discussions with the organization that might constitute salary caps or convention, which is also another violation. Now, we have already discussed James Harden violating CBA rules. In Section 3, no, Article 6, Section 3 of the CBA, It says, essentially, that if you are on the last year of your contract and you refuse to play, the organization that you have been signed on to can actually block you from entering free agency the next year and forever, essentially, and the Sixers could ruin James Harden's career if they wanted to. Now, this works because... James Harden signed into a one-year deal, so he is on the quote-unquote last year of his deal, Um, and that is why this did not apply to Ben Simmons. A lot of people might ask, why don't we pull something like this for Ben Simmons? It was because we were not, he was not on the last year of the contract with the Sixers. Now, James Harden should know this, his agents definitely know this, but James Harden still came out and said what he said, and we're going to play it one more time just because it is, it's so fascinating. Corey is a liar, and I will never be a part of an organization that he's a part of. Let me say that again. Daryl Morey is a liar, and I will never be a part of an organization that he's a part of. Yeah. So, obviously, James Harden is very, very serious about not playing under Daryl Morey. Now, We have to look at the other side of things, too. Sean and I have already discussed this video and our reaction to him very bluntly saying that he would not play for Daryl Morey under any circumstance, even though he did sign into his one-year player option for $35.6 million. However, the man said it twice. I don't think he's bluffing. I do think that somehow, some way, he is going to get out of playing for the Sixers. I don't know if he will ultimately be violating the CBA agreement or if he can somehow find a trade and push it in their face so much that they just have to agree or is just a giant media issue for the Sixers and it, I, I'm not really sure. We have we've discussed that James Harden is very very good at getting his way so we'll find out if there's more tricks up his sleeve of getting out of Philadelphia. But what we haven't really discussed yet on this channel is that James Harden or the Sixers might also be in violation here because if we look down at article Eight, section 2 of the CBA, that's where we get into the rules about these handshake agreements, these secret, you know, backdoor agreements that have been made or promises that have been made to James Harden. And the Sixers could be violating them as well. Now, the Sixers have just came off of the fact that we violated free agency rules by talking to players before free agency started, and we lost draft picks in 2023 and 2024 seasons because of it. The Sixers are already set back. We lost three or four players to free agency this year. It has been really an absolute mess of an offseason, um, and it's not over yet. We still have lots to see from James Harden and, of course, this whole situation as a whole. Now, what what do we do next is, I guess, the best question to ask. Uh, right now, what I'm interested to do see is what happens with this NBA investigation. Will James Harden come out and say why he called Daryl Morey a liar? Because there's really two reasons that he could have called Daryl Morey a liar. One, it was because of the money. So, James Harden believed, or allegedly believed, we'll say alleged for all of this, um, but that he took a pay cut this past year hoping to get a longer or long-term high-paying salary uh, in the future. He said, I'm going to take a pay cut so we can sign on PJ Tucker and Daniel House and build the team up, Um, but 
ultimately I am looking for that long-term contract so I can finish out my career strong and with some security. Apparently that was what was agreed on um, and it came out that they could not, the Sixers could not give him that long-term contract. So then he signs in on the one-year player option and he hopes to get traded to the Clippers and then Daryl Morey says, nope, we're not going to trade you to the Clippers, uh, you're staying here. So what of those two things is he really referencing when he's calling Daryl Morey a liar? Of course, it could be in reference to both of these things, um, but it could be in reference to one or the other, and we're really not sure. And what it is really depends on how the NBA is going to react. What I'm interested to really see is what news becomes public, because right now, as fans, we're kind of just watching all of this unfold and we know that there are missing pieces to this puzzle that we just don't know about. What was said to James Harden? Were agreements made? Um, how serious were these agreements? Were these actual promises or was this just implications? Um, either way, obviously James Harden is pissed and I truly do not think that the relationship between James Harden and Daryl Morey can be resolved. Um, I, I really don't. Uh, I know two weeks ago, I, I really thought we could all come together, hold hands, sing kumbaya, put our differences aside, and just be a happy team. I really thought everything would, would work out, but clearly I don't think that's going to happen at all. So we're just going to have to wait and see. Another thing that I do think is really interesting about this whole situation is the players' reactions to this whole James Harden situation. Now, we've already seen players like Sixers, uh, Joel Embiid, uh, Paul Reed, Patrick Beverly, all come out and support James Harden and say that they want him to stay, but they understand that business is business. And respects his decision to leave if that's what he so chooses to do. But what I've been really interested in seeing lately is just the reaction to this whole mess and this whole argument um, because a lot of times when a player has a problem with an organization, the media likes to kind of put the blame per se on the player rather than the organization. And um, Kyrie Irving actually responded to a Woj tweet uh, Woj was saying, quote, disgruntled Harden calls 76ers president Maury a liar. And Kyrie's response was, is he disgruntled, Adrian, or is he holding Daryl Maury accountable for his dishonesty and lack of transparency throughout the contract negotiation process this summer? Now, I will be very transparent. I'm not a huge Kyrie Irving fan, so I usually take a lot of the things he says with a grain of salt. However, one, I did not actually see a huge issue with the word disgruntled. Um, I kind of just thought he was saying he was, you know, angry at this whole situation. However, Kyrie does bring up an interesting point of how the media is presenting this whole situation and are we putting the, the blame on James Harden. Part of it is understandable. James Harden has a history of making a big media scene um, to get out of uh, playing for certain teams. I mean, he literally put on weight <laughs> to get out of a team. Like, he has so many tricks up his sleeve. I don't think we've even seen the last of it if he's really, really trying to get out of the Sixers and still have a career in the NBA. Um, but maybe James Harden does have a history of this, but we can't say that the Sixers front office doesn't have a history of screwing everything up. I mean, you can look at the whole Ben Simmons situation. Literally every aspect of that is just a fiasco. Um, we could look at the free agency um, tampering and how that cost us uh, draft picks. Uh, we could look at the fact that we lost Jimmy Butler. Um, we could look at a lot of different things that the Sixers have just dropped the ball on. And so it definitely leads to players being frustrated. I mean, even Joel Embiid is starting to waver on this team. He's come out and said that he just wants to win and doesn't even have to be with the Sixers at this point. And Joel Embiid has been very, very loyal to the Sixers throughout this whole, you know, process, if you will. Um, so 
obviously other players are getting involved. Um, PJ Tucker did come out. Um, he put like a cryptic Instagram story where he was basically saying that he is not going to back down or not he's not going to stop supporting his bros, which a lot of people took as him supporting James Harden in this situation as opposed to the Sixers organization. So there's a lot that we are covering and we will be covering every little bit of it from cryptic tweet to big news reports. So definitely make sure that you let us know what you're thinking on this whole situation. Um, are you interested to see what comes out from the NBA? Do you, have you picked this side? Are you very pro Harden? Are you pro Maury? Um, are you kind of like we are where we're in the middle, just hoping the best for the team in general? Uh, definitely let us know in the comments below. Um, make sure you like this video you subscribe and you ring that notification bell and I just wanted to bring up that 95% of people who have been watching our videos are not subscribed. So make sure that you're not one of the 95% of people who watches our videos but isn't subscribed because it will make Sean and I very sad. I'll see you guys next time.